My name is Andrew Ravens, and I've been covering pro wrestling professionally since 2013. In this video, I'm going to tell you the noticeable change that Sami Zayn talked about in a recent interview that I think you're going to find it very interesting because Sami Zayn is a guy that fans absolutely adore. They have since his El Generico days on the independent scene and ROH and PWG. And when he signed with WWE many, many moons ago, they were optimistic about the career that he would take. Now, he had a great NXT run. He feuded with the likes of everyone on that roster that eventually became big stars or big stars elsewhere, right? And when he hit the main roster, he had these ebbs and flows, right? Sometimes he would be pushed, sometimes he wouldn't. But for the majority of the time, he was a babyface because he's somewhat of a likable guy, right? You want to see him succeed. Yes, he can talk too much. Yes, he can come off a little bit annoying in some ways, but you want to see him succeed. He comes across as a genuine, nice guy. But in my opinion, and let me know down in the comments area below whether or not you agree, I think Sami Zayn's career really took off when he turned heel. And he kind of gave a little bit of an edge to his character. And I think in that part, look, for years and years and years, Sami Zayn was always regarded as one of the best wrestlers on the planet. He could work a great match with anyone and anybody. But where was the character? And that was the character work that he did as a heel that I think really was a pivotal moment in his career and changed his career forever. Now, obviously... He did great work during the pandemic era. I thought that was a noticeable run that he had, especially as IC champion. In addition to, I think his pairing with the Bloodline took him to another level. I think he and Jay Uso are two guys that got the biggest rub from being part of the Bloodline and the Bloodline storyline, right? I thought that was a noticeable pivot in his career and elevated him to a different level and now we've seen the rise of Sami Zayn right he dethroning Gunther as the Intercontinental Champion him getting that huge win at Wrestlemania his feud with Chad Gable as of late has been outstanding and he is one of Triple H's guys and so you knew especially since everything that he did leading up to the change but when Triple H took over main roster creative in the summer of 2022, after creepy Vince McMahon stepped away, you knew he was going to go and give Sammy a bigger push. And that's exactly what he's done. And he's really done a great job since moving over to Raw as a single star, getting away from Kevin Owens, getting away from Cody Rhodes, and being on his own. Uh, this year has been really remarkable. And so he recently spoke with Sean Ross Sapp, a Fightful Select for a new interview, and during it, and this is the reason for today's video, he discussed the change that Triple H has made since taking over main roster creative. Now, he's made a lot of them, but a noticeable one is the smaller card sizes for premium live events, a.k.a. pay-per-view events. Right under Vince McMahon, we would have several matches, anywhere from 8 to 12, if not more, depending on the PLE, right? WrestleMania freaking marathons. And it's said, but under Triple H, he likes to keep the cards anywhere from five, six, maybe seven matches, depending on the event. And that is something that Sami Zayn, I thought, had a lot of interesting things to say. So I want to share, and this is what he had to say. I have mixed feelings on it, because certainly as a performer, if you're not figured in with seven or eight matches, there is a little more real estate and a better chance of getting on. Now, even if you're in a pretty prominent story, you might not make the cut. It's not to say anything to the quality of your story or performances, but it might not factor in if there are only five matches. Five is really not a lot. It's a quality over quantity mentality, which is hard to disagree with. I do think it's been better. It makes matches that are on the event feel more important because there are only five. If this made the grade, it subconsciously tells the audience that this is something the company is invested in. Therefore, we should invest emotionally. There's a subconscious component to that. I don't think is often factored in with fans. Fans kind of know their part in the dance a little bit. And when they see, oh, this is something we're supposed to care about, 
They care about it. End quote. I I think he brought I think he brought it and broke it down as best as possible. Personally, I think B level shows should be right at two hours and forty five minutes, right under that three hour mark. And I like the five to six matches. Let's get in. Let's get out. Let's move on. Right, especially if you're at night. Uh, one criticism of AEW that I have, and I appreciate Tony Khan wanting to get as much talent on pay-per-view events to give them a pay-per-view payday, and I appreciate the fact that he is asking us, the consumer, to spend $50 nowadays every month, or at least 10 times a year, for his pay-per-view events, but When you start a show at 6 p.m. with pre-show matches and you book three to four pre-show matches in addition to going, and now obviously I'm in in Central Time, so 7 p.m. Eastern, for pre-shows, and then you go five hours or so or four hours or so with a main card, that's a long time. When you're having over 12 matches on a freaking card, that's too much. Personally, I think anything over eight matches is way too long. That's just my opinion. With WrestleMania or a SummerSlam or a Royal Rumble, I can understand why you would want to go a little bit longer. I would want I, I can understand why you would want a larger card because they're bigger events and you want to get as much talent on them as possible. I think we are going towards a great strategy which is you are changing the dynamics of PLEs with the major ones, right? So you have your B-level pay-per-view events, a la Backlash France, King and Queen of the Ring, the other day, Clash at the Castle. And then you have your higher ones, which is WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, Survivor Series, SummerSlam, and Money in the Bank. Those Those PLEs, I think we are moving towards a lot of those. Maybe not Survivor Series, maybe not Money in the Bank, but definitely Royal Rumble, maybe. Uh, WrestleMania is already there. SummerSlam is moving there where you make them into two night events, right? They're so big that you can have a total of 16 matches, but eight across the cards or a total of 10 matches and five across each card. I think that's where we're going. I think WWE has already told us that WrestleMania has been like this since, uh, WrestleMania 36 in 2022 SummerSlam starting in 2026 is going to a two night, uh, format. I love it. Because you get more talent on the card without having to overload the fans with so much content. I think Royal Rumble has a real potential of doing this as well because I think it's easily understandable. And I think fans would be a-okay with, okay, night one, you have the women's Royal Rumble match be the main event. And then night two, you have the men's Royal Rumble match. You split it that way. You get more talent on the cards, you don't burn out the fan base in one night, and WWE makes more money from ticket sales and rights fees for, or site fees rather, by these cities bidding on their product, bidding on their events, securing their events, right? You've already noticed with Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, Survivor Series, Money in the Bank, all these big events, they bring in a much bigger superstore they bring in superstores compared to just a store for fans to you know shop so i think that's definitely where we're going let me know down in the comments here below what do you think about this change or recent change and i will see y'all in the next video